Hello and welcome to um, Light Technology. We're going to go through and explain the reason why Light Technology is going to be a good computer system. We're going to talk about memory. We're going to talk about the expansion of memory and we're going to talk about um, how Light Technology utilizes its memory system. Now every computer requires a processor to process data. Data being processed in the system will be uh, the same as any other processor, but it will be a processor based on uh, light and how light functions and performs in its many areas of spectrum. It also will run under um, areas of magnetics because there is a little bit of a electromagnetic field. Um, as we all know, magnetics and uh, electromagnetics and um, data storage requires an area of some magnetics. Now, when it comes to free open memory though, because it's light technology and because we're dealing with not just particles in the system of critical manipulation, but we're dealing with all the spaces that are around the particles. Now my system will be uh, a brand new way of programming, a brand new way of coding, and a brand new way of manipulating and using all these components which are naturally found in creation and nature. At this moment, we use memory chips. Now, memory chips um, require um, electricity. They require certain areas of um, uh, uh, <clears throat> known gaps and spaces which is called empty space right and it uses um, the technology of copper and various other uh, metal components and data is uh, placed and stored on them and then it is removed and memory is is just open free space because of the new science of dark matter and because of the understanding of how dark matter behaves and performs in the molecular, in other words, creating all of the empty gaps in between all of the physical energy particles. Now all particles and all areas of, 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 of tiny bits of matter are created and generated because of um, light. It's, they're also created because of energy and they also exist because of um, uh, condensed, dense pressure or compression that builds the physical particle. Now because we've got energy particles and we've got physical particles that are being created and made that are physical, they are still being created and made from what we know as light. Now the different forms of light and their different behaviours and waveforms and wave patterns of light we can utilize in light technology the dark matter spaces. Now dark matter is just open space. It's all the gaps in between all the molecular. Now my system will basically use the molecular, it will use the energies and all of this all of its natural properties, but it will communicate across the gaps. It will communicate across all the gaps. Now, the structure in which we're putting together and the structure in which we're building, it means that dark matter in my system of how the whole computer operates and functions is classed as memory. So it means that when the product is created and made and complete, it is full of a volume of memory. Now memory, we're going to write programs and we're going to write the recognition of dark matter. We're going to write the volume of dark matter and then we're going to write in the knowledge of containment of time, time containment particles. Now these time containment particles, when you get access to them, you can drop things in, right? time containment particles, dark matter. Now time containment particles as dark matter, when you drop information in, 
there is a process of natural calculation that goes on because it's time containment, right? So, drop it in, recognize the environment, and have it recognize the time. Have it recognize the integers of time. Have it recognize all of the mathematical principles that build the dark matter containment. And because the programming recognizes that a certain volume of dark matter will have a certain volume of time containment, you can put as many of these things together as dark matter particles, right? As time contained particles into a volume and call it memory. And anything you drop in as data, it will calculate. It will calculate and it will um, operate and perform and then it will come out just like any other member. And because you can drop it in and basically pull it out, it performs just like any other normal memory. Now, because it's a memory that you can utilize with the right programming and the right recognition of how to drop your knowledge of information in and how to get it to be calculated and then use it as extra memory storage and then pull the data up, right? Because remember, Physical is physical, and storing data on physical is storing data on physical. So you've got particles of physical, and particles of physical, which are metal in some cases, and magnetic, and you can drop your data on. Now these are data chunks, data chunks that get dropped onto physical matter, that are held by magnetics. Then you take them off and drop them into free open space. And these things perform just naturally in free open space. And they calculate, they do all the things that they need to do. And then, right, you have a field of a magnetic field around it and you pull the data out onto physical matter. Right, so you drop data in, let it calculate, do all the necessary things it needs to do, and then pull it out and store it under magnetics on physical matter, right? Like technology. Now, you have a laser beam and you have light waves and you have all the areas of natural light function and it does the same thing. It does exactly the same thing. You've got a magnetic um, area to it. You have uh, information flowing through it. You've got uh, knowledge of programming that you programmed away and sent it through um, the area of the light wave and the light beam. And remember, we're dealing with multiple different wave bands at spectrum. So we've got different areas of different strings. So we've got light wave strings of color and light wave strings of various di uh, diversity. And we have light wave strings of all sorts of things. And all this is streaming information through, right? But it's streaming information through and it's passing through all the stuff that we need as memory. So it's already in the memory. It's already sitting in the memory and it's already functioning and performing it in the memory whilst it's out in the dark matter regions of contained time, right? So that's how we get a small volume, right? And remember, infinity has a calculation to it and it has a volume of a calculation to it, right? That's how you create dark matter infinite memory in your brand new light technology components now because we're going to do this and it is physically possible because nature and creation has rules and these rules function and take knowledge of messaging and information and plow it through the known existence of our reality. I'm a part of this. My very structure of flesh is a part of this. The air around me is a part of all of this knowledge. And even the light that bounces off me and through the camera that you're looking at right now is all part and parcel of the knowledge of which I'm, I am bringing. And some of it is already known. The only bits that are not known are the dark matter particles of time realm containment and using it as memory, as infinite memory, and also using it as all other things when it comes to storing data on physical, physical um, matter structures. 
So this is where 